Okay, this is Tony Gonzalez from Made in Metal, and today we are going to speak to Michael Mills, who is the mastermind behind Toe Heidel. How are you, Michael? I'm very well, Tony. How are you? Fine, thank you. Tell me, how is the rock and metal scene there in Australia? I ask you, because for example, my main doubt is if the people go from one city to another, if they want to see a concert, for example. Yeah, it's um, it's a very small scene, I would say, particularly um, when you compare it to Europe. Um, most of the, uh, well, all of the main cities actually are at least nine hours by car, it's very far, a long distance. So um, the um, the prospect of touring is. Uh, it's very expensive and it's it's very long and um, I guess the, the population isn't what it is in Europe as well so that it's the the scene is small here but there's a lot of talent there's a lot of amazing bands a lot amazing musicians and uh, uh, so I think we we do what we can <laughs> yes so and uh, are there international concerts there are yes that's uh, since pandemic and lockdowns and things uh, we've started to open up again and um, some big bands come over and, and, and do big tours here. Um, so, but, but, but uh, the bands have to be huge to tour here. Things like Kiss and uh, Kiss were just here actually. And um, some of the more mid-level bands and smaller bands, uh, it's, it's quite rare that they would, they would play here. So in the middle of this scene, you try to rise with a toe hider. But uh, I remember that the first news that uh, we has about you was uh, here in Europe, was when Anthony Lucasen from Aerion invites you to come to Europe to sing in 2013, The Theory of Everything. Tell me, how was the first experience with Lucas? Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I flew over to the Netherlands and basically just spent some time in Amsterdam and Rotterdam and stuff um, uh, because Mr. Lucasen wasn't exactly sure when he would be ready for me. He was still working on the album and I had a little holiday there. But once I, once I finally made it out to his studio... We had a great time. It was um, it was uh, very exciting, and uh, I was very nervous, obviously as well. But um, I think the um, the album came out really well. Um, and very very happy and very proud of my performance on that one. And the album as a whole, I think, is fantastic. And do you think that this collaboration, in some way, puts you on the map? Absolutely. I. I I owe my. I, I feel like I owe my entire career to Arion and uh, Arion Lucasen. Um, there's uh, the most people that t tell me that they listen to my music f find out about me through uh, through the Arion Association. Yes, this is not a disrespect, but I'm no. going to ask you a question. Maybe David Townsend knows you from Arion, or is because you or he is as crazy as you <laughs> uh devon townsend may be a little familiar with what i'm doing toe hider actually supported devon townsend uh on an australian tour uh, a few years ago um and i also stepped in and did his parts for the th the theater equation um so I th I think he's, he may, he may he may know some of my stuff. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm a huge Devon Townsend fan. I, I particularly his early work. I mean, Terrier is probably one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, I, yeah, I, I love him. And maybe we we both are a little crazy. I I, I think I think most musicians are, are crazy, on some level. You've got to be crazy to to want to do this full time. I think. <laughs> Let me tell you that uh, we met you with the CD. I like it. We mm -hmm. review it in 2021. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, I have a little, no, I have little to no memory of these memories. That's right. I think that in some uh, parts are similar, but there are some parts that are different. So apart from the situation that I like it have 12 songs and uh, I have little, no memory, have only two. What are the more, the main differences between both of them? Um, I think, let's see, the differences, uh, well, first off, the new album is a concept album. It tells a, uh, a science fiction comedy story. Um, I like it. Each individual track has its own theme, its own flavor and its own idea, I suppose. Um, so the writing process was, was, was quite different. Um, uh, I think the, the album, I like it. Um, I was very, uh, keen to explore different styles of music. There's a lot of eighties synth on there, but there's also some country and folk music there as well as rock and metal and things like that. Um, Whereas with I have little to no memory of these memories is more of a celebration of the progressive rock sound or genre, uh, and and it, and its and its history since the since the uh, late sixties. Um, so with the new album, I've tried to explore and and really celebrate the uh, the different sounds and the the different textures and and uh, flavors that have popped up over the years. Um, so I would say that those are the, the main differences. Some weeks ago, uh, Cohit and Cambria released a new CD. And uh, now, according to what are you telling me, I think that there are a little coincidence because the, the new Cohit and Cambria CD is related to a science fiction story or things like that. But uh, you passed three years to, to write and record I have little to no memory of these memories. I think the 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 lockdowns and the and the the pandemic uh, was a huge demotivation for me. Actually, I was um, probably like a lot of people, it just felt like everything was a little bit pointless, and it was hard to get motivated to work. Um, and it was, I feel like it was quite an the, the times that we're in lockdown, I was, I was feeling quite uninspired actually. Um, I was doing a lot of online streaming performances and things like that. So that helped keep me sane. But, um, but as far as writing and recording, um, I really didn't get much done. I, I, I did start work on the album in 2019. Um, but then 2020 came around and I got almost no work done, but it wasn't until maybe the, the, the following year that I, I really uh, found my way again, I guess. I found, uh, found a reason to, to, to finish it. And um, um, so there was a just bit of a blind spot, I suppose, in, in the middle there where I didn't get much work done. So I guess that was, that was the main reason why it took three years. Uh -huh. So the CD has two songs, but the first is the Hoarder Radio Edit. And mm -hmm. uh, the Hoarder is included in the big song, the, the song title. And uh, tell me, why did you decide to do it that way? Well, uh, on the actual, uh, on the CD and vinyl, the songs aren't separate. It's, it's basically just one continuous long piece of music. We decided to take a small section of the song um, and make us a, uh, a little music video for it, uh, just, just as, as a means to promote the album. Um, so that, that's the reason we, we, there's, there's, there's only one song on, on the CD. There's only one song on the vinyl. There's two songs, obviously, because you need to flip the vinyl over and listen to side B. And, uh, tell me. The man who draw the video, the stop motion, the animation, is the same that is working with you for a long time. No? 
Yeah, Andrew Seltmarsh designed all of the characters, um, uh, and he has done all of the illustrations for Toe Hider um, since the beginning. But for the actual process of animation was done by um, a man named Giovanni and a lady named Eleanor. Um, they uh, they were the team responsible for the actual animation parts but the yes the characters were designed by andrew saltmarsh it is interesting sorry that the main song i have little to no memory of these memories sometimes match the different parts but sometimes not did you try and it was impossible to match all the parts or it was done on purpose i think yeah it was it's all down to how how all of the themes and ideas uh, could tie together and um, also telling the story through stopping and starting or the continuous motion. Um, some parts of the album were written as individual songs to begin with. Um, and, it, and it took maybe three, three or four songs. I can't remember now. A, a handful of songs uh, were written before I decided to make it one continuous piece of music. And in some reviews, the journalists define Toe Hider as a prog rock project. Do you agree? Prog rock. Um, I I would agree with that. I think um, the freedom of the progressive rock label um, is is what I enjoy. I, th I I think of all of the main progressive rock bands over the years, um, and they're all quite different, really. When you think about Yes and how they compare to something like Rush or uh, King Crimson or Marillion or Dream Theater or all of this stuff. They're all quite um, diverse, I suppose. And there's a lot of freedom to try new sounds. And, you, and uh, um, it's basically a limitless canvas of a style, I think. So I, I would agree with that, yeah. Yes, the story, there is a story in the CD. Is the story about as long as I uh, listen, it's about memories, mm -hmm. maybe the lack of memories, the missing memories. So what do you think about this subject? Um, yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a story about memories and uh, our relationship with, with our past and uh, how we have been thinking a lot about how our personalities are defined by um, our memories, but also our personalities are also sculpted by the things that we've forgotten uh, or uh, things that we can't recall, I think have just uh, just as much influence on us as people as the, as, as, as the things that we can remember experiencing. Um, and it's also touches on the, um, the subject or the themes of uh, wanting to remember uh, and you know these little devices here help us remember we could basically remember our entire lives if we want we we have we we love to film things and take photographs and all of that and uh, uh, so it's a little bit of a comment on an exploration on that, on, the, on, the, on that theme as well. Yeah, I guess technology um, is making our, maybe the, the, the function of our brains that uh, helps us remember things a little, a little lazier. I, I certainly am suffering from that myself. I, um, I, I'm so reliant now on GPS. Um, I could drive to the same place 10 or 20 times and I can't remember how to get there without a, without a map. <laughs> um, and I wasn't always like that, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's definitely taking its toll and I'm wondering what the long-term effects of that will be. I guess we'll find out. Yes. Mike, I have read, that there are two endings, one on the CD and another one on the LP. 
So I haven't listened to the LP. So when I read that there are two endings, is in music or lyrics? And why did you decide to do that? It's in both, um, lyrically and musically. There is a there is an alternate ending. Um, I think the reason I did it was just for fun, more than anything. It was an uh, interesting idea to have a different twist depending on which format you had. Um, uh, maybe I used to read these books called a choose your own adventure book where you would get to a, the end of a certain page and it would say, if, if you want to, if you want the character to go into the forest, turn to page 36, but if you want them to keep walking, turn to page 47 or something. So I like the, the, the difference in the, uh, in the outcome of those books. And uh, I've actually always thought about maybe doing some kind of musical version of that. But in the meantime, I think this is a fun, fun little experiment to have two different endings. Um, so, and, and I think that you'll only be able to hear it on the vinyl. I don't, I'm not sure at this stage whether we will release that digitally. For a moment, I thought that maybe it was because when you write the story, you discover that the characters have life beyond your mind and decided to do something different. Tell me. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's that's another that's another interesting thing. That's a good point. Um, because there, as you know, there's there's no one way to to finish a story. And yeah, you're right. The characters tend to take on a life of their own and. Um, it's fun to explore alternate outcomes. Um, some characters start with a, with a good intention, but then end up maybe bad or something at the end. So yeah, it's, it's all fun and games. It's good. And uh, the vocal parts reminds me bands like Frank Zappa, Spot Bird, even Cats in a Space. I don't know if you know that band from England but maybe your references are different, taking account that you sound, uh, I read that you sound Bohemian Rhapsody in the past, and yesterday I discovered the video of the Fairy Feller Master Stroke. Mm. So, and, and tell me, what are your vocal references? Uh, Queen is a huge, uh, has, a, has a huge impact on, on, on those, uh, those big harmonies and, and things. Um, but uh, also a lot of uh, traditional heavy metal bands, I suppose, and the 70s hard rock and metal thing. Devin Townsend, actually, as well. I love uh, the way he contorts and changes his voice and explores all of the different tonalities and things. Yeah, I could I could sit here forever. There's a lot of, a lot of singers that I love to listen to. Um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully embrace these sort of influences while putting my own uh, flavors and, and style on it, I hope. <laughs> I imagine that, for example, in part of the choir, that uh, made me, uh, reminds me of uh, Zappa, some Zappa music, but there is a little uh, funny parts, comedy, irony, and uh, I remember an American singer, uh, Weird Al Jankovic. Does he influences oh. you? I love Weird Al. Yeah, um, that I, I I would say he does, but not. Um, I guess I don't intentionally do that. But but um, Weird Al is is a genius. Um, his original work is fantastic. I mean, I know he's he's mostly known for his parodies. But um, he's a phenomenal musician and an amazing singer as well. I, 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 don't, I don't think he gets enough credit for his vocal abilities. I think he's, he's amazing. Yeah, so that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good one. I'll have to, have to think about that more. Mm. <laughs> yes, I know that is late for you. It's midnight there in Australia. And mm. I need to keep you waking up. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No, that's good. So, before starting the interview, I thought, let me come 
on time and even a little early because if he see that it's midnight and I don't appear, he say, forget it. Maybe nah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine. I'm used to staying up this late. It's good. Yes. And, and tell me, do you have some plans to bring this CD on tour or something like that? Or your music? Um, we have been talking about it. Um, it's a... Uh, this album in particular would be quite challenging to to bring to the live stage simply because there's so many, I guess, so many layers, so many vocal parts and so many keyboard parts and things like that. So um, I would have to put some time and effort into thinking about assembling a band that, um, that we could go out and, and, and play shows with. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant as well because so many of my friends in bands are having tours po tours postponed and and cancelled and and all of that so um when we do it i would just want to be sure that there'll be no interruptions um but it would would be a lot of fun to try to play this stuff live it's pretty crazy at times yes but the problem is mike that uh, if you uh, join a band how many musicians do you need to play this? Maybe two, this two one, players. I would say two keyboard. I would. I think I would need uh, two keyboard players, and maybe one of the uh, one of the keyboard players could also play guitar. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, hopefully everyone in the band could sing backing vocals. Because if not, I would probably need a couple of backing singers as well. And this starts to add up, <laughs> you know, with. With uh, not only not only money and, and time, but also availability and uh, you know all of all of that kind of thing. So um, I'd yes. love to do it. It's just yeah, I'd have to have to keep thinking about it. I think. Yes, this this is the reason why I started this conversation talking about the Australian scene. Hmm. But imagine if you bring a band on tour. Maybe you start touring around Australia. And if the cities are very far from one to another, the audience is sure it could be a disaster. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, uh, it'd be, it would make a lot more sense if I took this idea to, and, and played some shows in Europe. I think uh, what I'm doing uh, is... It's actually much more well, well received in Europe than it is in Australia. I think um, I think uh, people in Europe generally love music that's a bit more adventurous. Maybe here in Australia we like the simple ACDC <laughs> stuff. I don't know. I love ACDC, you know, but but uh, maybe that's the maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. Yes, and I have an idea to finish uh, the interview. Maybe it's better to you to to. Call uh, Arjun Anthony Lucasen or, or David Townsend, and maybe they can find European musicians for you, and you mm. come tour around Europe. What do you think? It's better. Yeah, I'm I'm friends with um with a lot of the the, the musicians in the Arion uh, camp, so uh, that's definitely uh, an angle. I have a uh, yeah I've, I've, I've many. Musician, musician friends who, who are, uh, who would be able to do it. But the, anyone that's good in this business is also very busy and also very hard to, to, um, to get. <laughs> so, uh, but it's definitely worth thinking about. Yes, please. Fun. Think, think on it because I would like to see a band as crazy as your alive. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It'd be fun. So, uh, if you want it, I would like to give you a space. If you want to talk about how uh, the people can find your music or your Patreon, this is your moment. Excellent. Yes. Um, so, the best and easiest way to get hold of the new album is via Bandcamp. So, you can head to toehider.bandcamp.com. Um and as you said, yes, we also run a Patreon, um, which is going quite well. Um, 
And actually, there's a lot of unreleased songs that you can get if you sign up to the Patreon. And actually, you can also hear the vinyl ending for the new album if you're on Patreon as well. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's also a Discord um, community of, of, of Toe Hider fans where we, we all chat about various things, which you can access through the Patreon as well. And uh, But yeah, also the, the album's obviously on all of the, the streaming platforms and YouTube and um, anywhere you listen to good music. I have seen that you are in your own studio. What are you going to do now when you finish the interview? If you have another, are you going to play or go to bed? Um, I think I'll do some more, some more work here. I'm, I've, I've got a, a few little bits and pieces of music that I need to get done, and then uh, maybe go to bed in in an hour or two. <laughs> okay. So, Michael, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate your music. I would like that your music will be more famous here in Spain. But let me tell you that maybe it's not so famous, but you have fans here. Yes. Well, uh, we actually did a show in Madrid in 2017, I think, and it was uh, it was fantastic. It was uh, so much fun. Um, so we'd love to get back and, and play play some more shows over there. All those people are waiting for you. Mm. So you That's only right. need to think on it. Maybe, Absolutely. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Yeah. Next year. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Okay, Mike. So thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very much for your time, Tony. Perfect. Have a good night. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>